Welcome back everybody to another episode of Timeless Adventures. And today we still have a lot of work to do. I know last episode we finally moved into this jungle and uh, it is it is beautiful. Just I mean, just look at this. Nothing is greener than having the jungle grass all over the place. It's just, let's just take a look. And then I have this, uh, look, look at this. I have my faithful bird. You know what? This bird is so loyal. Remember, I couldn't find him, and then he just found me. And then, so actually, it turns out when I thought I found the bird last episode, that wasn't actually my my bird. That was just another bird. Um, I couldn't pick it up. So I just kind of like, oh, well, okay, it's, it's no big. There'll be another one. And I'm just clearing out this jungle, and out of nowhere, my bird just finds me and just lands right on my shoulder just like that. And it's so cute. Just look at this. Look at this, I'm gonna have an army of birds just ready just to stand on my shoulder and annoy people. And if we take a look over here, I've been actually befriending all sorts of animals. Look at this adorable panda bear. Now, they have they have their forest over there, but for some reason they really like being here and I've been attracting ocelots now and then. Let me, let, let's take a quick nap. As you can see, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm back to basics. I'm sleeping outside under the stars with nothing but this massive, not even massive, chest monster i say not even massive because it could be much more massive i mean well that's we have shulker boxes and shulker boxes and shulker boxes this is almost my whole storage most of it uh we still have we still have like bits here and there over at the original base but we, we most of it's here and i realized the plan was is I was going to, you know, I mentioned last episode, the center of the base is going to be a storage. Now, what I want to do is I want to have a shulker box loader storage with, you know, one chest of space because it's going to fit 27 shulkers, which is a lot of items. So, but I, I was going to start it right here, which isn't realistic because I was going to go out in four directions this way, this way this way and this way that's not very realistic because that river's right there so what i'm going to do is i've been actually clearing some out already we're going to take out this area we're going to not go into the bamboo forest we're going to take out some more space right here and i think what i'm going to do is maybe dig down a little bit into the trenches and we're going to have the center we're going to have a center circle which is going to be a clock of sorts and then that's going to be my the beginning of the base. And it's not going to be my automatic storage. I'm going to just have something for now. But it's going to be part of the mega base, of course. Um, we're going to have something right here. And it's going to branch off in all four cardinal directions for the storage. It's going to be a massive redstone project. And so we have to fill this in, take out some trees, and get started on that. And uh, in between then, of course, going to have to travel back to the beginning base to repair our tools because, uh, yeah, we don't really have a way of repairing our stuff <laughs> because I don't have a gold farm. But also, like I said, you know, for those that want to see the farms such as the, uh, the, the, the industrial gold farms and uh, other other big farms that I'm going to be building here, if you ever want to see full builds of that, then go and take a look at the time lapse playlist. Um, I always have a link to it in the description down below. So you can take a look at that whenever I upload a survival let's play time lapse or a big build or whatever. If you're going to see it in that, um, just to save time for these episodes. So there is that to look at. And I think now we still have to clear out some more of this forest. So we did it. We did a choppy, choppy time lapse last episode. I'm going to save that this time. So I will just see you when we have this cleared out a bit more. No update on the uh, on the progress of the ch of the chopping down the trees. I just want to say, just look, just look how great my bird is. He just chills right there, waiting for me to, to go to sleep, and then just waits there while I work. He's a very patient, very very kind bird. He's, he's still good. Look at this. Look at this. Ah. Uh, oh yeah. You want some? You want some rockets? Oh, you want some rockets? There you go. Although you know, if I'm being honest, I feel like if I did a little bit of controlled burning. It would be quicker and easier than chopping down every tree, especially 
look at what I have to deal with. If it were, if it were just jungle trees, I wouldn't have to worry so much because look, they're very simple. There's the ones that go like this, and then there's the, the double trunk, the two by twos right there. Very easy, I can go to the very top and then just chop my way down. But for some reason, this jungle is so heavily infested, not filled, infested, as if it's a sickness, infested with these horrible oak trees. This is the worst type of tree imaginable. I, I would much rather just do nothing but like cut down the tallest jungle trees and like giant spruce trees. I, I would rather fight the dragon without any armor before I have before I take down these trees. There's I've done so many of these and it's like it's so awkward because I have to chop. I have to chop right here. Then I have to climb my way up Then I have to break a bunch of leaves to get all the pieces of logs that are hidden. Like, look at this right here. There's one hidden. There's some stuff hidden over here. All the way back there. We got some bits. All around here and it's just it's the most annoying thing so it makes me really just want to set this whole section on fire but i don't know if i'd be able to stop it so that's a huge risk i might <laughs> it's just random thoughts i might just keep chopping another reason why i just absolutely love the jungle is just here's the genius of how this is designed you know you have all these trees all these varying heights except for those nasty nasty oak but you got the jungle trees all over just you know some of them up there some of them down here and then you got these these small little jungle bushes it's just genius and then you get the, the annoying part is having to get rid of them because it's just like one block for you know just one log but as far as the landscape goes and the layouts and how the jungle is just prepared that's just personally I, I i love it i love it as far as look getting rid of it it's a bit annoying but it's just one thing that just makes me really love the jungle even more you know, now if some of more of this stuff cleared out, it looks beautiful, by the way. I just emptied out, like, I just filled another shulker box full of logs. Um, <laughs> but the more I look at it from here, I'm thinking I just set the base up right there and it just kind of nestles nicely right in here because it, it, it makes a bowl. So if I go with that, so here's what I'm thinking now. It's much easier. Like the first step was just emptying, clearing this place out. Now that it's a little more cleared out, I really like this natural bowl that we have here. And I want to kind of work with that. I, I think it's just a way that I kind of avoid having to do extreme terraforming too. But um, this is good. So like if we we will have to push this back a bit. So. We'll fill this in and we'll push the edges back a bit more up until up till right about there, right? And that way we have a nice, oh, just eyeballing it about a 50 by 50 on this level here, here at 63. So C level. And we'll dig down, we'll get rid of this. We'll be at 63, I think. And we'll bring it all down. And then from there, we will start the beginning of this mega base for now it's just going to be a place to sleep and i've already kind of partially calculated the dimensions required to account for my storage so we don't have to worry about that now but just know that that is in the design when we start to see it come to fruition i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little bit more clearing just so I can, I, I want to see better, and then I gotta get rid of all this grass. Man, I kind of like this, this ruined, overgrown look. Like with all, once all the logs are gone, things start to decay. It looks really cool. Like imagine walking through a bunch of these floating leaves and the vines and hills and grass all over the place. Oh man, that that just, that, I think that would just look incredible. That was a lot of choppy choppy. So let's take a look together and see what we have to work with here. Oh man, already very nice open. Look how, I just love how green it is. So here we go, we're coming across, we're coming to that bowl. There we go. So we're gonna, we're gonna touch down right in this area that I'm circling around right now. This is going to be, let me get over here real quick. This is going to be where it all begins. So what we have to do, we also have to think of a color palette, or really, I should think of a color palette, and I don't actually have the, an idea. I know I was gathering a bunch of basalt because I wanted to build with blackstone. Now I realize I need to get this beacon all the way over there because, uh, well, we got a, a 
next big project coming up for this uh this base development so here's what we've got to do now that we have this beacon and uh we're gonna go so you'll see it better on the camera but we're gonna open up this bowl a bit more so we've got to on this side over here we're gonna bring this back a bit and we're gonna kind of try to just open it up and make it a little bit more circular and we probably have to fill in a bit over here maybe we'll bring it all back to this this distance it'll make a little more sense when you see me put it into practice again like i said in earlier episodes i i want to make it not so blocky very weird to say given that this is minecraft and pretty much everything is composed of blocks but <laughs> the goal is to make it less blocky you know not so geometric meaning not so square and blocky you know what i mean you you, you know what i'm trying to say um, we want to make sure that it's a little bit more rounder. So I'm probably going to be using chunk base for reference to help maintain because I'm not too good at circles yet. Just off the top of my head, I need a little more of a visual guide to maintain better circle uh, ratios and dimensions. So I thought I saw something fall. Maybe it was the saplings. But yeah, we're going to open this up and we're going to kind of we're going to keep this this the, how it layers from like here to here to here to here to here how it just kind of you know it, it goes down like that we're going to keep that curve and it's going to go all the way around kind of like those um oh like you you know what i mean those old school theaters i think like the old like uh roman theaters they wear or amphitheater whatever it's called where the state the audience is up here and then the stage tapers down that way it's gonna be kind of like that but just you know we're, we're, we're keeping to the bowl uh, I'm, I'm talking too much let's just get to digging
And after all that, we have all of these chests purely from materials gathered used to put this base together. Um, I spent in creative about a good four hours kind of conceptualizing what I wanted to do. You'll notice in the time lapse, I kind of started something and then I ended up actually changing it and, uh, you know, redoing. I did. I redid all of the wings and then I redid all of the corners. Um, I realized that we needed more depth because it was still too blocky. And remember, I said I wanted to try to not be so blocky. And I started remembering what Green said about having depth in your build and not making things so flat. So then I was like, you know what? What if I use walls? 
and it just adds that little extra dimension and i thought that was really really cool i added some 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 of this i used that lighting technique and lit up here so this is purely aesthetic we don't actually need these it's just there to keep things lit up because this whole ground is lit because of that lighting trick same thing for every wing and of course outside in the courtyards uh, I ended up having to redo this. I, re I I switched to glass panes again to add that dimension. And I thought this right here is kind of like a trim just for the wall, the window, the corner pieces was a special feature. I thought maybe of bringing it all the way out and around. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's keep it special and use it just for these corner pieces. Let me know what you think, everybody. Because uh, that time lapse, you may not realize it, but this was about 14 hours of survival building um and it took me over the course this has been, been working i've been working on this over the course of over a week um spreading out my build time uh for about a week and about 14 hours total we got this massive chest monster here we got we got to work on um over the course of a week even during the production um like when when this last episode came out uh, I was actually building this while I was putting together well, episode nine, Welcome to the Jungle. And it's it's paid off. Like I actually spent time in creative figuring out what could work and how we could build this. And I started playing around with like the basalt as a trim because we needed a contrast because this is a very dark build. This is all nether material, right? And we got the nice nether brick. We've got the black stone variants. And I thought, you know what? It's very, very dark and it's going to be hard to see things. So we have that basalt there that doesn't make it super bright. It's still gray, and but it's bright enough to kind of like, you know, uh, reset your eyes um, to give yourself a little bit of rest. And we, of course, got to change. I had to change the trim right here from blackstone brick to polished in creative because I'm like, eh, this blends in too much. Let's kind of change, th change things up a bit. But this is it, everyone. This is literally like the first big base I've ever built. Let me know down below what you think. Um, this, I took a lot of time putting this together, and I'm very, very happy with the results. I wanted to do something different for here, like some sort of piston door. But it would just look weird having this, like, because I'd have to cover up the redstone, and it would take up a few more blocks than I would like, as well as some space on the outside. So... I decided to go against that and sticking to the nether theme, it blends in with our soul lanterns. I use a bit of warped wood. So that's what's happening here. Let's let's see if I can uh, fly through. Oh, no. My goal is before the end of the season, I want to be able to fly all the way through all of my courtyards uh, without crashing and at least get like two or three laps in. And so that's going to be. Oh, so I could do that, but I can't <laughs> I can't do a whole lap. Um. Here we are on the north side, I know, because I got my chest monsters. So what we have here, you'll notice the outside is all courtyard. It's all grass. It looks very nice. And we're this is the perfect space to create our gardens. And sticking with the nether theme, we're going to do nether farms purely for aesthetic. I want to make it look good. Um, the actual farms are going to be branched out, but here we are in the courtyards or the quadrants, right? And I want to have one quadrant where we do, we're going to grow some nether warts. And then another one's going to be a crimson garden and then a warped garden. And then unfortunately, the last quadrant, I was just going to do like a flower bed. Because there isn't anything else that you can grow in the nether um, that is nether specific. So we're just going to we're, we're just going to use flowers, have a flower bed, I think. And then we have here, we have the wings. Let me in. Uh, we have these wings in our cardinal direction, north, south, east, west. Right. And each one's going to look a little different. So I didn't do anything for those ones for the time lapse, just because I'm not quite sure what I want them to look like just yet. However, we wanted to get this one established. This is going to be our manual storage okay we're gonna have our shulkers and our double chests and all that stuff it's gonna look similar to the one at the old base except it's time to sleep anyway we're gonna have our manual storage here and then we're gonna have another one's gonna be like horse stables 
And because they can't get out just yet, um, we're going to whatever, whichever wing has, ends up being the horse stable, we're going to actually burrow out like 20 some blocks, decorate it all up, light it up, and then have it come up out of the ground um, away from far away from the circle. And that's going to be the way the horses get in and out. And then we'll just we'll just have them, you know, uh, leashed up with leads. And then we're going to have let's get over here. It's very spacey so I can fly around. It's very important that I can fly around in my own house. And then the next one's going to be just animal farm. We're going to have ourselves some cows, uh, some sheep, some pigs and uh, uh, chickens, chickens, maybe um, nothing for not for anything important, but just to have them. And because this is a jungle, they're a little bit harder to find. So we're going to have to do a little bit of adventuring for that. And then another one, the last one is going to be a it's going to be a nether room. Literally a nether room. I mean, <laughs> very horrible joke. I know I'm going to turn this into like a a nether room, like a portal with like, I don't know, crying obsidian bits of gold here and there. If we can get a zombie pigman in here and then I can trap him name him and hope he doesn't despawn like Wilbur did and also like my skeleton horse Dernavir did at the starter base. Um, RIP, press F for respects. He is also gone because realms. Um, hopefully, hopefully <laughs> zombie pigment doesn't despawn after being named and being stuck in a spot that they can't despawn from. Um, but you know, this is bug wreck. This is realms. It, it may happen. Um, we'll have them standing guard. Uh, they can't grab items because they're not piglins, unfortunately. So we'll just put some armor stands here with some gold and have them hold some nether stars and wither skeletons. skull, something. It's going to look cool. It's going to look really cool. And then this big empty space right here is, is pretty much the living room. For those that don't know how yurts work, this is pretty much your yurt. Um, It's just a big open space, no walls, no doors. You just have one room here. One room there, one room there. You set it up however you want. You can put up like little like those uh those wall divider things. Um, however you want to do it. I'm going to have a big open space. The center is probably going to be like, I don't know, like a, a giant map of the area. And it's, it's pretty much just going to, you know, have bedroom here. Uh, I mean, I'm not super good at interior decorating, but we'll we'll come up with something as time goes on. I didn't even tell you the best part of this. So you notice how we have those wings, right? The cardinal direction, north, south, east, and west, right? Now, while one of them is going to be for like a horse stable for them to come in and out. Uh, oh, oh, also this very center, we're going to cut this open and I'm going to put in like another circle. We're going to bring it up, have like maybe a platform or some sort of watchtower or something. And that way I can just fly in and out from anywhere and not have to worry about going in into these little spaces right there. I could just fly right in and boom, I'm already in my house down below. Below the first floor, we're going to have the automatic storage. So it's going to be a big opening, I think, actually on the first floor. So I can fly straight down into the storage, not have to like I want ease of access for my storage. It's very important. Oh, also real quick, you'll notice that this is a little I try to do a little bit during the time lapse. Um, it's it was just a ring and it's really weird. So I'm going to take some of his dirt. We're doing a little bit of like unofficial trading with each other. He needs a lot of stone. I need a lot of dirt. You'd think I wouldn't run out of dirt, but because of this hollowing this out, I actually did run out of dirt several times. I had to do a few dig sessions, but we're going to take this dirt. We're going to bring this level out this level out. We're going to bring this out to make it look a little more realistic because right now it's just like, oh, he obviously just put dirt here. So we're going to bring this out a bit. We're going to turn this into like blackstone basalt. It's going to be like very like uneven. I, tr I want to try to randomize the texture. So we're going to do a bit of that and it's going to kind of just bleed out this way and gradient effect into the terrain. I think that's going to look pretty cool, though. So we're going to go about as far as this, I think that's going to take a lot of time. So that's why I didn't do a lot of it for this time lapse. I wanted to get the base done and then we can discuss planning uh, 
for what we're going to do further down the line. But that is going to be all the time we have for today, everyone. It has been a lot of work uh, and uh, production going into this <laughs> episode. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Am I at my base? Okay. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of this base. This is my first mega base. Uh, may not be considered mega. Um, for those that do like, you know, for those that watch Hermitcraft and hear Green talk about what mega, what constitutes a mega base. But for me, for me personally, on the scale of things that I've built in my history of Minecraft, it's mega for me. <laughs> and that works. Um, I'm, I'm happy with how this turned out. Let me know below what you think. And uh, yeah, that, that's gonna That's going to be it. Um, you know, the plans. You're going to see some stuff in the next episode. Some things that weren't here before. We're going to do a little bit of decorating, I think. And uh, we're going to have some fun stuff coming up. So that was that was uh, that was Timeless Adventures, everyone. Thank you all again so much for watching. I am, of course, Timeless Traveler, and it has been very, very fun. It has been very, very exhausting. I'm very glad that this is done <laughs> and I'm happy with how this turned out. Again, let me know what you think. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I got a lot of people that watch my videos that haven't subscribed yet. It would be great if you if you did. Um, you can stay up to date on all future content if you slap that notification bell and you'll be able to know when I release a new episode. So again, you all take care. Have an amazing day and I will see you in the next episode.